Immigrants are extremely vulnerable to trafficking. Um, because of their undocumented status, many feel as though they, if they are, a crime is committed against them, that they are um, unable to report it because they're afraid of deportation. And that's something that traffickers use to, um, to keep them in under their control and to um, coerce them into staying in whatever exploitation that they're in. So um, that's a critical thing. Keeping people in the shadows by not reforming immigration is um, basically facilitates uh, an environment where human trafficking can thrive in the United States because people are going to be less likely to, one, be aware of the laws that protect them and also to come forward um, due to their fear of law enforcement and deportation. Um, so the longer we wait to, to reform immigration, the more people will be coming in illegally and um, the more vulnerable they will be to exploitation. understanding of and a, a sympathy for people involved in the commercial sex industry. Um, first of all, just the awareness that human trafficking is happening in the United States, um, because I think that is still actually not very well known. Um, not just to foreign nationals brought into the United States, but also by U.S. citizens um, in both labor and sex trafficking. And I think that's the first place to start is having people be aware of that and how to identify it. In other areas of human trafficking, I would say um, the understanding that women who are in the commercial sex industry um, oftentimes are not there by choice. Having a com compassionate view for the women who are in the commercial sex industry and understanding that the things that led them to that situation are often not related to uh, a host of really appealing options and also um, some brokenness and some abuse that has occurred in the past. So just having um, more compassion than judgment for people who are in the commercial sex industry would be a great place to start, treating them more as people in need of assistance than, than perpetrators of a crime. Well, I began working um, for World Relief in the Refugee Resettlement Department, and we have been resettling refugees for 30 years, and I was working in the um, refugee resettlement department for about five years and I gradually became aware of um, that of this thing called human trafficking like what is that and I thought I understood that it was a uh, group of people or a population that was exploited but I didn't really understand I thought it was kind of like similar to refugees and in some ways there are a lot of overlaps in terms of exploitation um, and refugees are vulnerable to trafficking but um, I I became aware that people who are in trafficking um, are just so vulnerable um, and that they're here in the United States and that World Relief was in a position because of our relationship with local churches and because of our experience with working with the foreign born in the United States that we were in a position to really be able to serve this population and we um, certified uh, victims of human trafficking who are foreign nationals receive the same, ben same benefits as refugees in the United States. So um, we were already equipped to provide those services. I just saw that within World Relief, um, you know, we had the, we already have the network um, to be able to serve this group. And um, I went, one formative time um, was when I went on a walk in our North Carolina office, sponsored a fundraiser um, with SCT Now, Stop Child Trafficking Now, to raise awareness and to raise um, funds for um, local programs that, support, uh, that were supporting trafficking victims at the time. And our director, uh, Mark Cadle, um, who's a mentor to me, he, he's always been very passionate about this issue, especially from the demand side and really addressing why are so many women being trafficked and forced into the commercial sex industry? Wow, well if there wasn't a demand, if no one was buying, then um, no one would be selling them. He really helped me understand the dynamics of trafficking and really lit a passion inside of me, just telling me what was going on here in the United States in our backyard. Parents, you know, selling their five-year-old children um, for drug money um, to a man who was going to rape her for an hour and um, just, just really, um, it just captured my heart when he was helping me understand that it was happening right here and that we need to do something about it.